Hello everyone. Welcome to ACCT 121, Introduction to Financial Accounting 1. In this course, I'm going to be your instructor, so let me first introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Al Jabir. My office location is number 80 in the admin building A. In this course, we're going to cover mainly chapters 1 two three four five eight and nine this is for the theory part for the practical part we're going to be doing a lot of exercises because accounting is easier uh, easier learned by practicing rather than by teaching and we're going to work on sap erp software uh, through Blackboard. Hopefully, I'm going to be providing you with uh, access codes and you will be able to access SAP from home. This is at least the plan for now. Evaluation for this course is broken down into two parts uh, theory part and practical part. For the theory part, you're going to have 70 uh, marks. And for the practical, you're going to have 30 marks. So this course is uh, more heavily focused on the theory side. But this doesn't mean theory um, like memorizing definitions and things like that. It's going to be more of a exercise work. And um, for the practical, it's going to focus on SAP. How the marks are broken down, you're going to see this in the following slide. So here you can see um, the marks of the course how and how are they broken down. Uh, at, at least for the time being, this could change uh, considering the remote learning or the e-learning environment we're currently in. but. Um, as a standard or as it stands right now you have 70 marks for the theory section or for the theory assessment and you have 30 marks for the practical assessment the theory assessments are broken down into four you have two quizzes out of seven so that's a 14 mark right there and you have two assignments assignment one and two also each out of seven marks so that comes up to 14 you have your midterm out of 14 and you have your final exam out of 28 marks so that comes up to a total of 70 marks or 70 percent of the course evaluation uh, on the other side you have the practical uh, assessments and uh, it totals up to 30 marks you have a 12 mark uh, midterm and a 18 mark final lab exam if you focus on each assessment as it falls due and follow me in this course uh, uh, right away from the beginning and and try to keep up uh, you hopefully are gonna be gonna do great and you're gonna get the mark that you're hoping for if you keep postponing and um, dropping classes or missing lectures and things like that you're gonna really struggle because uh, accounting works as a chain so each lecture builds up on the lecture before that uh, for both sides for the theory and for the practical so missing one class or one lecture could really make you struggle so please uh, keep that in mind okay so let's take it away let's begin uh, as you can see here, the uh, textbook we're going to be using is um, Kiso textbook, Accounting Principles by Wiley Publishers. Um, the book that I have is the 12th edition. As you can see right in front of you here, the, the slides are um, created based on the 10th edition. There's not a huge difference. There's just a few adjustments and um, basically the 12th edition is more focused on um, international uh, examples so I find it more helpful than the uh, 10th edition which focuses on the US uh, so 
if you have either books you're going to be fine i would prefer if you have the 12th edition just mainly for the differences in some question um, uh, examples or like examples in the textbook and questions at the end of each chapter they might vary just a little bit okay but you're going to be fine uh, with either of those if you don't have the 12th edition you can get a soft copy of that i know that students from previ previous semesters uh, were circulating a complete soft copy of the textbook between them honestly i don't know how they uh, acquired it and i don't know i don't have a copy myself but if you can reach out to any of your uh, uh, classmates who have done this course before they probably have a copy um, uh, of that all right okay here you can see uh, a snapshot of uh, Aramco's um, index or stock price um, as it's represented by um, TASI or Tadawal All Share Index which is basically the Saudi Arabian Stock Exchange and um, you see some uh, information like the current price the change in price from the previous closing uh, the previous closing price the opening price for today's uh, trading day uh, the highest the uh, stock have achieved um, and the lowest price the stock have achieved throughout the trading day uh, the number of trades and so on um, this stock movement is based upon uh, a lot of different factors uh, it's not the place or time to discuss that right now I just wanted to uh, help you take a look uh, at this just as an as, a, as a, a gateway for us to get into accounting and why we need accounting in our lives so just to take a quick glance try to understand as much information as you can but this is not really um, the main purpose of this accounting course here you can uh, look at Aramco's performance for the previous period uh, as you can see you have a comparison um, or we have the statement of income which is really important for any of you who's going to be doing a financial statement analysis course with me um, this is also important for you as an accountant and uh, throughout the course I will teach you how to get to this phase and how to uh, create uh, at least a basic statement of income for a specific company uh, if you can notice um, you have the numbers for 2018 at the end of the year like 31st of December 2018 you have uh, the sales sales cost total income and so on all these items uh, on the uh, statement and right next to it compared as a as an a on an annual basis you have the 2017 number and the 2016 number this statement in particular gives you at the end a, a, a figure which shows the net income of the company um, and you can gauge uh, a company's performance um, or you have a, a, a basic idea of the company's performance looking at the net income figure on their statement of income now before we start learning accounting um, a question that comes across uh, almost all my students from previous years it crossed my mind before when I was in your place when I was studying accounting for the first time uh, especially if you're not majored in accounting is why I have to learn accounting or why am I doing accounting why do we need accounting which is a very fair question if you think about it uh, to try and simplify things for you uh, I need you to understand that if you travel to a new country for example if you decide tomorrow that you're gonna go in and and live in let's say uh, Russia for example for a few years or in China um, 
the main thing that's going to help you co-op throughout your living there and engage in, the, in your surrounding community and understanding people around you is learning their language. If you don't learn their language, you're always going to feel uh, like a stranger there. Okay, So for you as a student, even if you're not majored in accounting, let's say you're majored in, in marketing or whatever other major supply chain or something like that, uh, you need to understand that accounting is the language of business so any business out there around the world main task or main purpose is to generate and track uh, the money that they're generating even for charities um, they their goal eventually is to um, collect as much money and spend that money on the appropriate uh, um, people right so uh, accounting is the language that's gonna help you keep track of um, how a specific business is doing um, are they generating money are they losing money how can they improve um, why if they're losing money why are they losing money where's the money going where is it coming from and all of these things so understanding accounting is like building up this new language that you're gonna learn which is gonna help you co-op in the business environment and understand you, the business that you're working in understand other businesses and how are they doing and how are they uh, handling their money are they making profits or they're losing money um, and the reasons behind that uh, if if you understand accounting understand financial statements and how to read them then all of this is going to become much easier for you okay so the easiest way to look at it is that accounting is the language of business all right okay so now let's jump into chapter one i always encourage my students in my courses and in any other courses to look at the study objectives before they start studying uh, any chapter or any topic that they're looking into because that uh, will help you create an idea of what is expected of you as a student what exactly you need to focus on uh, and what is the main uh, or the key points of that specific topic so here as you can see our studying objectives is that uh, are that we're gonna first explain what is accounting and we're gonna define it so I have spoken to you earlier in the previous slide uh, I given you I have given you a general idea of uh, an ac accounting and what do we use it for but this time we're gonna get into it uh, in technical terms and try to give it a specific definition uh, and number two we're gonna identify the users and users of accounting so basically we're gonna look at who are the people or the um, institutes that are um, interested in learning accounting and looking at accounting information and what do, we they, what do they use them for uh, number three we're going to understand why ethics is a fundamental business concept uh, the ethical uh, side of things always comes up in all different topics especially for accounting because in accounting you're dealing with money so the temptation is high uh, and the um, the stories of um, uh, scams and um, ethical um, uh, dilemmas uh, controversies are all are all around the world and uh, ex the examples of that are tremendous so it is very important for you as a student of accounting to have a solid ethical basis on which you can build up your career for the future number four we're going to explain generally accepted accounting principles okay what is it uh, used for why do we need generally accepted uh, accounting principles and number five we're going to explain the monetary unit assumption and the economic entity assumption these are two uh, accounting assumptions that are very important for you to understand uh, number six we're going to state the accounting equation and define its components this is a very important point because uh, everything is going to build up on the accounting equation from here you're going to see that 
this accounting equation is going to last with us for the uh, for the end of the semester all the way throughout the semester we're going to use it to build up a lot of different uh, um, statements and calculations and things like that uh, number seven we're going to analyze the effects of business transactions on the accounting equation um, what is a specific business transaction going to do to our businesses accounting equation how is it going to affect it uh, uh, and why uh, we look at it that way so we're going to try to understand that number eight we're going to understand the four financial statements and how they are prepared financial statements uh, are so much more than these four that we're going to look into um, however these four financial statements are the main uh, four that are very important and they most of the time give you uh, the bigger portion of an idea or conceptualization of a specific company so they could most of the time be enough for you to understand a business uh, when you look at these four financial statements that we're going to be looking into okay so bear with me and let's jump straight into it all right so for the for this slide or for the first uh, student learning outcome um, we're looking into accounting uh, in technical terms and how we can define accounting so as you can see the definition of accounting is broken down into three groups it starts with the um, with the activities of accounting so what is an accountant usually engaged in what are the things that he does on a regular basis so first the activities of accounting uh, equation uh, sorry the activities uh, of uh, accounting which are identifying recording and communicating economic events so these are the three things that an accountant usually does we're gonna look into them a little bit closer in the following slides but for now uh, you just need to understand that these are the three activities of accounting uh, and when we say activities of accounting we mean that these are the three main tasks that an accountant in a specific company does on a regular basis which is to identify transactions record them and then communicate those transactions or those economic events all right so the second part communicate these economic events to whom uh, or these economic events relate to whom they relate to the organization that this accounting uh, accountant is working for all right so if we look at uh, an accountant that works in uh, Aramco for example he's going to need to identify record and communicate economic events of Aramco all right to interested users which is the third part interested users the people who are interested in in these accounting information we're going to look at these users closely also in the few coming slides who are they uh, how can we group them and why do they need to look into to look into those accounting information okay so here is a closer look at the three activities of accounting as you can see in the uh, illustration first it starts with identifying economic events which is basically um, when the accountant looks into everything that goes on in the organization and starts sorting and uh, recognizing uh, identifying which of these things happening around him in the organization actually need to go into the the second step or the second activity which is recording so um, the easiest way to define this is economic uh, events so basically the accountant only needs to look into economic events transactions uh, and how can we recognize these we recognize them by looking at their impact on the financial position of the company so anything that the company does that is going to have a, a direct impact on the financial position of the company needs to 
be moved on to the second step. Anything that does not affect the financial position of the company needs to be ignored or eliminated from the process. Okay, examples of that would be if the company bought uh, a new um, car, for example, for delivery or whatever, or a truck for delivery. Uh, the accountant needs to look at it and decide is this purchase is this truck that we paid let's say a uh, hundred thousand dollar for uh, gonna have any impact on the financial position of the company yes of course it's going to because we paid a hundred thousand uh, reals and in exchange for that money we receive we received this delivery truck so it does have a direct impact on the financial position of the company so in this case we identify this as an economic event or as a transaction and we gonna need to record it so we take it uh, through to the next or the second activity of accounting uh, an example of something that needs to be ignored for example is if the company hires a new uh, employee for instance so the company signs a a contract with a, a new employee and they decide that they're gonna need to add a new uh, employee to their marketing team for example uh, does this have a direct impact on the financial position of the company uh, yes but in the future so when we uh, decide to give this em new employee his first paycheck for example then at that time there is an exchange of money happening so there is a direct impact of uh, on a financial position of the company uh, and it should be uh, recognized then but at the moment if we just for example interview this employee and we decide yes we want him we're gonna add him to our team and we sign a contract with him or something or an agreement that he's gonna start working uh, in three months from now um, for example then this uh, is not a transaction and we do not record it in the time being okay the second activity which is recording which is basically uh, taking that economic event and translating it into the language of accounting and enter it, entering it into the books of the company uh, we're gonna see how we can do that actually we're gonna focus on how we can do that throughout the course so you're going to be learning that in the future finally when all the records uh, are done uh, the accountant needs to go to the third activity which is communicating uh, those uh, records uh, to the users of accounting information how does he communicate this financial information through creating or preparing uh, accounting reports Okay, or we call them financial statements all right the accounting process also includes the bookkeeping function the bookkeeping function is basically the second activity so recording of a transaction in the books of the company is also called bookkeeping before accountants used to be bookkeepers and um, in the past and this uh, in the new understanding of accounting or the modern understanding of accounting is only one of the tasks that the accountant does so he needs to identify transactions first then record which is the bookkeeping task and then also have another activity which is communicating those uh, financial information okay an accountant also needs to know how to analyze and interpret the information for the user so after they create those financial reports they also need to a good accountant needs to have the ability to translate and explain uh, what's in those financial statements to interested users of accounting information now let's look at who are actually those users of accounting information users of accounting information is any person or, or, or organization uh, that is uh, uh, interested in the business itself and we usually um, uh, accounting books group them into two groups um, for classification purposes so we have internal users which you see here in the blue color or in the blue circles 
and we have external users of accounting information this list right here is not exhaustive uh, so these are just examples but you can measure on that and you uh, with time will have the ability to understand how you can group or how you can understand or identify you uh, users of accounting information internal users uh, as you can see here we have the examples of the management um, the human resources team for example the finance department the marketing department um, and as you notice the common theme here is that all of these are people who work inside the organization itself okay uh, <clears throat> so uh, a financial department for example is part of the organization so they see this specific organization that we they, they're looking into their accounting numbers they see it from the inside all right whereas on the other side uh, as you can see in the white circles you have other institutes uh, like the IRS or like here uh, what we have in Saudi Arabia uh, we also have investors labor unions uh, we don't really have unions here in Saudi Arabia but it's very common in other countries especially in the United States uh, and okay uh, and then we have uh, creditors usually these are banks uh, you have a large a bank here as an example or whatever bank that might lend our company some money uh, we call them creditors uh, the SEC the stock exchange uh, committee uh, and also customers so um, cus uh, sorry and the CMA which is the capital market authority uh, and customers all of these are also interested in the accounting information of a specific business but as you can see here the common theme for this group is that they are looking at the business from the outside so they are not employee of the business they don't work within the organization uh, in their day-to-day -day activities they're not there they're not around uh, they come and look at the business from the outside so we call them external uh, users of accounting information now here we have some practice questions true and false take a look at them and give yourself yourself a, a few seconds to think about it before you click through to find the answer so for the first one it says owners of business firms are the only people who need accounting information so what do you think of that do you think that's true or false second question management of a business enterprise is the major external user of information now remember the internal and ex external user uh, groups that we classified earlier. What do you think? Is the management an external user of accounting information? Number three, accounting information is used only by external users with a financial interest in a business enterprise. Is that true or false? Final one, bookkeeping and accounting are one and the same because the bookkeeping function includes the accounting process. Okay, so the answers are for number one, it's false because owners of business firms are not the only people who need accounting information. Number two is also uh, absolutely false because management of a business enterprise is not an external user it's actually an internal user of accounting information number three accounting information is used only by external users with a financial interest in a business enterprise as we discussed earlier that is not the case accounting information is used by both internal and external users and finally bookkeeping and accounting uh, are one and the same of course that's not true because bookkeeping is just one function of the uh, accounting uh, process or one of the three accounting activities which is the second activity recording uh, bookkeeping is just another name for recording now in this slide uh, you're gonna see a breakdown of the different types of accounting accounting is a big field of study 
So it is broken down to four different uh, majors or focuses. And here you can see uh, these four groups. Uh, we have financial accounting, managerial accounting, tax accounting, and auditing. Uh, this is how accounting mainly um, around the world is broken down. Uh, the difference uh, we're focus is going to be uh, on managerial and financial accounting. So here we're going to distinguish between the two. For managerial accounting, uh, its main goal uh, of this specific field is to produce useful information for a company's internal users. So a managerial accountant is focused on speaking to and communicating information to the internal users like management and so on. Uh, on the other hand, financial accountants have some internal use uh, users in mind, but their main focus is uh, the external users of accounting information. So they are focused on communicating information to uh, groups of users outside the scope of the uh, organization, like the uh, IRS, for example, or SEC, and for the banks and things like that. Okay. Now after we looked into who uses accounting information, now we're just going to take a quick look on some of the questions that these users might be asking themselves. So what is their objective of looking into accounting information? Um, so these uh, just a few examples here, for example, a human resource or employees of human resources department or the HR manager. Uh, might be asking themselves if we can afford to give our employees a pay raise for example so that's might be his objective when looking into the accounting information of the company uh, investors uh, might come in with a um, a question in mind of the income of the company so they're mainly concerned of the profits uh, and maybe growth potential of the company uh, to decide whether to invest in that particular company or not. Uh, management might be asking themselves if they need to borrow in the near future, how much they're going to need to borrow, where they're going to need to borrow that money from, how much interest they uh, uh, can afford to pay on their borrowings and so on. Uh, finance departments, uh, they could be asking themselves, uh, do we have sufficient cash flows right now? to pay dividends for our investors uh, or not, okay? Uh, marketing uh, team might be asking themselves what price for our products should we charge and what price is gonna give us the maximum possible income, net income or profits, okay? And finally, creditors, they probably be asking themselves, is the company able uh, or have enough cash flows to pay uh, our sh our um, debt back. Uh, are they going to be able to uh, afford short-term debts? Uh, how much um, uh, credit are they currently uh, carrying? What is their credit score? Um, how strong is the financial position of the company for them to be able to pay uh, to pay us back or not? Okay. By now, you probably have a better understanding of this in-class activity. Again, uh, a few true or false questions for you to just make sure that you uh, are following with me. So uh, I'll read these for you out loud right, um, very quickly. Give yourself a few seconds and try to answer um, as we go, th um, go through them. Number one, the three steps in the accounting process are identification, recording, and communication. Is that true or false? Number two, bookkeeping encompasses all steps in the accounting process. Accountants prepare but do not interpret financial reports. Number four, the two most common types of external users are investors and company officers. Number five, managerial accounting activities focus on reports for internal users. Okay, so obviously for number one, the three steps in the accounting process are, are identification, recording, and communication, which is true. 
these are the three activities of accounting uh, the accounting process number two bookkeeping encompasses all steps in the accounting process of course that's not true as we said bookkeeping is mainly uh, just refers to the second step or the second activity of accounting which is recording so it does not encompass all steps in the accounting process number three accountants prepare but do not interpret financial reports which is false accountants at least should have the ability to interpret financial reports number four the two most common types of external users are investors and company officers the first one is an external user which is the investor however the second uh, one which is company officers from their name you can uh, readily see that they are actually internal users they're not external users so number four is also false number five managerial accounting activities focuses on reports uh, for internal users which is exactly what we have discussed before so number five is also true now let's take a quick look into uh, ethics and financial reporting uh, of course as I discussed uh, in brief earlier that ethics plays a uh, major role in this day and age in the business uh, sector and in, in the global uh, trade world in general so uh, especially for accountants having a strong ethical uh, grounds to work from is very critical um, standards of conduct basically uh, guide and rule how we interact in the business environment and this is very specifically sensitive and very crucial for accountants because they are dealing with money so scandals that relate to financials are usually um, very catastrophic to a business and we have examples of uh, our world we have examples here in Saudi Arabia in the recent years uh, just like what happened with mobile company and how their financial reporting scandal have affected greatly their stock price for a very long time and it's still recovering from that okay so how do we define ethics and financial reporting it is the standards of conduct by which one's actions are judged as right or wrong honest or dishonest fair or not fair and this is basically uh, how we define ethics uh, the examples as I mentioned um, we have Mobile, uh, Moal Group, Enron this is a big one uh, you can Google Enron and see what happened with their scandal um, I think it was um, around 2000 uh, something in the 2000s maybe 2004 or something um, it was a big story in the news uh, Worldcom, HealthSouth, AIG and others um, it is very important for financial reporting to be based on strong ethical uh, standards and background uh, as I mentioned because it deals with with a very sensitive uh, information and it can make or break a company one small single mistake or um, an attempt to embezzle money uh, or inflate profits for example or whatever uh, a company might attempt to do is eventually going to be figured out by the public especially if the company is traded or listed on the, in a stock exchange so it's uh, it's going to be followed by uh, investors and followed by analysts and auditors and uh, government agencies that eventually sooner or later gonna figure out that there is something uh, manipulative in the reporting of that company and this would have great repercussions on the future of the company so let's take a quick look into mobile situation I mentioned that earlier uh, let's dive deeper into what happened so in brief what mobile have done or Mobile's accounting team have done is that they overinflated their revenues by listing or reporting uh, revenues from 
contracts that uh, were not yet to mature and what that does is that let's assume that mobile was supposed to be making um, 20 million profits this year uh, by including these contracts that actually have covenants of cancellation within them uh, they inflate their profits or their revenues in that particular year over contracts that are not actually realized yet or not finalized yet so um, this is a huge uh, uh, mistake in accounting uh, this is against uh, accounting uh, generally accepted accounting principles that everyone around the world follows and this can be misleading to investors and to other users of accounting information where they would see uh, or they would uh, look into the, the revenues of the company and see that they are much more than they are actually should be so let me read this for you through although uh, the final investigation by its a lot is yet to be finalized uh, of course this slide is old it was finalized and uh, mobile was penalized the hefty um, uh, price for that as far as I'm concerned it seems that the company reported revenues on contracts that were yet to mature these are the contracts in which future installments are recognized by the company in full value up front as revenue which is a huge mistake uh, obviously in accounting this is a big no-no as you only report revenues once the service has been delivered not contracted so you cannot just contract or sign a contract for a future service and then report uh, the agreed upon amount as an actual revenue for your business uh, uh, and it's not uh, not um, earned yet okay especially when there are opt-outs in the contract so the contracts actually had covenants of uh, cancellations and opt-outs within the contract and if this behavior is allowed then any company can actually um, orchestrate uh, a bunch of contracts near the uh, end of the financial period in order to report them in their uh, financial reports as revenues and then in the follow following financial period they can just cancel uh, these uh, contracts which can open the door for a lot of manipulation okay so this is not allowed in accounting you cannot treat operating leases as capital leases simply because ownership will shift at the end of a contract so that's basically uh, what happened with mobile e. now we'll go to uh, our fourth part of today's lesson or this chapter which is uh, the basic rules and principles that accountants need uh, need to follow so we have two globally recognized principles the first one generally accepted accounting principles it is usually called gap for short so G A A P gap and these are basically just a set of uh, um, guides and rules that dictate how uh, an accountant should report uh, financial information and how they should present their financial statements it, it, the point of having a unified system like this is to make sure that the um, same standards apply to everyone and uh, the same standards are understood by everyone so just like grammar in a specific language when you have grammar you have rules uh, for the language and it it makes it easier for any other speaker of that language to understand what it's trying to say because you're following specific grammar imagine learning English for example and talking to someone with lots of grammar uh, mistakes what's gonna happen is that uh, other person maybe an English speaker or native speaker would would most likely misunderstand you or misinterpret what you're trying to say so it helps a lot to have specific guidelines for everyone to follow in the industry okay so as I mentioned earlier we have two globally recognized standards the first one is gap generally accepted accounting principles the other one is IFRS uh, internationally uh, international financial uh, reporting standards uh, 
gap is mainly followed by united states and specific companies ifrs is followed in europe mainly so generally accepted accounting principles are defined as a set of rules and practices having substantial authoritative support that the accounting profession recognizes as a general guide for financial reporting purposes uh, purposes so these are basically the main rules and principles that needs to be followed or legally acquired uh, to be followed by um, accountants in the uh, in whichever country that follows gap as a standard um, standard setting bodies who sits or who puts uh, these standards up uh, for everyone to follow um, we have first the capital market authority uh, in Saudi Arabia which on uh, the so uh, Securities Exchange Commission uh, these dictate um, rules and regulations for uh, publicly traded companies here in Saudi Arabia we have um, the Saudi Organization for Certified Public Accountants al Hayat Saudi al Muhasib al as uh, known uh, by SOCPA for short in Saudi Arabia uh, in USA in the United States we have Financial Accounting Standards Board FASB and internationally we have the International Accounting Standards Board IASB. Here we're just going to take a quick look at some of the principles and the assumptions of GAAP. Okay, so here we have two measurement principles that we're going to look at. The first one is the cost principle, or otherwise called historical cost principle, and this basically uh, states that companies need to record their assets at their costs so basically the cost that they paid to acquire those assets uh, if you might wonder what an asset is uh, you're gonna wait a little bit we're gonna come to that uh, in, in future uh, but basically in general an asset is everything that the business owns that holds a value okay so uh, buildings computers used in the company uh, products or stock and all of these things cash um, bank accounts all of these are considered assets of a company so the cost principle basically states that a company when a company acquires a specific asset they need to record that asset in their books based on the cost that they actually uh, paid to acquire that asset okay and then we have the fair value principle which indicates that uh, on the opposite or the, on the contrary of the cost principle that assets and liabilities should be reported at fair value so which is basically the price uh, received to sell an asset or settle a liability or basically the market price for that specific asset so if the company owns a few cars for example instead of um, reporting them based on how much they paid for that car when they bought it they need to record it based on the current market value of that of these cars okay Here we have a couple of examples to further help us understand the difference between cost principle and fair value principle. Uh, you just need to know that in general, most companies use cost uh, principle to evaluate their um, assets. Um, the only exception would be for uh, assets that are actively traded or, and change in price on a regular basis. Uh, th uh, like investment securities for example these are the kind of assets that can be reported as uh, under the fail value uh, principle however this is always dictated by the the legal organization um, in that specific country so for us for example uh, the SEC uh, would decide whether companies are uh, obligated to uh, use cost uh, principle for specific types of assets and when are they allowed to use fair value principle okay so for the first question here the deuce company has five plants nationwide that cost a total of a hundred uh, million dollars the current fair value of the plants is five hundred million dollars the plants will be recorded on and reported as assets at uh, which uh, is it under 100 million 600 400 or 500 million most likely in this kind of scenario 
the company will be obligated to re re report or to record their plans under the cost principle so they will report it as uh, at a value of a hundred uh, million dollars so the answer here would be a uh, on the other hand uh, the fair value principle is applied for what kind of asset is it all assets current assets buildings or investment securities here most likely it will be uh, applied only for D the investment securities because this is a type of uh, asset that is actively traded and changes in value over time uh, in a re uh, on a regular basis here we have a couple of assumptions assumed by the generally accepted accounting principles the first one is monetary unit and this assumption basically states that um, accountants only include in the accounting records transaction uh, data that can be expressed in terms of money so this also relates to the identification um, activity that we discussed before so an accountant basically cannot include in their records anything that cannot be expressed in terms of money so a change in CEO of the company for example to a better CEO uh, is not something that you can as an accountant can record in your uh, books you need to only record or include uh, economic events or transactions that can be measured in terms of cash or in terms of a monetary value the second assumption is the economic entity assumption which requires that activities of the entity be kept separate and distinct from the activities of its owner and all other economic entities so basically the company needs to be treated as a separate legal entity uh, that stands on its own regardless of um, uh, who owns that company uh, regardless of any other entities that associate with this company this business or this company this organization needs to be uh, in accounting terms treated as a uh, an individual standalone entity separate from any other any other uh, influences uh, this takes us to the types of uh, businesses so we have three main types of businesses a sole proprietorship okay which is owned by one owner and we have partnership which is normally between two and maybe a limited amount of partners say nine or ten and then we have corporations which are the big organization that are publicly traded and they're owned by hundreds and hundreds and maybe even million uh, different owners like the huge um, businesses or corporations we see in this day and age like Apple for example uh, Google Facebook and so on here is a, another uh, group of true and false practice questions take a look at them read them and then try to answer them before moving to the next slide this slide is mainly for revision purposes uh, as a business student you're probably aware uh, of this uh, classification but this is just to help you uh, review uh, and brush up on your understanding of different forms of businesses as I mentioned before we have a uh, proprietorship or usually called sole proprietorship uh, which is generally owned by one person and usually is a small business and the owner receives any profits suffers any losses and is personally liable for all debts so if the business goes down the owner is also responsible for the financial obligations of that business if the business makes a lot of profit there's only the owner who's gonna gain uh, or benefit from those profits the second one is partnerships which is owned by two or more persons and often is a retail and service type business generally unlimited personal liability and partnership agreement uh, will combine the two or more partners that uh, own this business and based on the um, breakdown of the partnership so let's say 20 uh, 20 80 percent or 50 50 percent based on that all the benefits are going to be distributed and all the financial obligations also going to be uh, incurred 
uh, depending on the partnership agreement that combines the owners of that business. Finally, corporations, the ownership is divided into shares or uh, stocks, and they are public, publicly traded. Uh, this particular business has the benefit uh, of being treated as a separate legal entity organized under state corporation laws. So, for example, if you are an investor in Apple uh, and you paid, let's say, $50,000 for your investment, in case the company goes down completely and is uh, obligated to pay debts or uh, whatever uh, financial obligation, you are only liable for that amount that you invested. So if the company goes down completely, then you're only going to lose that $50,000 that you have invested since the stock price is probably going to go down uh, to zero or, or when the company needs to be uh, insolvency. Uh, however, no one can uh, force you to um, pay or to cover any extra financial obligations uh, as an investor in that particular company and the profits are going to be distributed equally uh, on the uh, investors or the share owners and some of the profits of course are usually kept for reinvestment of the business so let's say Apple makes um, 20 billion this year maybe the board of directors and the management of the company decide that they're going to distribute only 50 percent of that so 10 billion is going to go uh, be distributed on the share owners however another 10 billion may be kept for um, as retained earnings uh, for the company to use for future or to fund future projects Now we'll go down, uh, get down to the uh, numerical uh, business of accounting. Uh, if you are, uh, as, a, as an accounting student, you need to memorize this formula as your name, okay? So you're going to be using this formula right here in this course and in, the, in your understanding for the future for any work that you uh, do for uh, or in accounting, okay? Especially if you're majored in accounting this equ uh, equation is really important for you so this equation provides the underlying framework for recording and summarizing economic events uh, here you can see that we have two sides for the equation so we have an equality in the middle and on one side we have assets okay and on the other side we have two uh, groups of accounts uh, which are liabilities and owners equity so uh, we're gonna break it down further and explain what this means however you're gonna need to know from now on that this equation always holds true so for any work that you're gonna do in class in case this equation gets broken down or this equality in the middle is not actually true then that means you have done something wrong okay so always the assets of a business needs to equal the business's liabilities plus the owner's equity business. Let us now try to break it down further and understand the components of the basic accounting equation. So the first component we have is assets. What are assets? Assets are basically all the resources that a business owns. I gave you a few examples before including um, land, factory buildings, uh, office buildings, cars, computers, uh, books, machinery, uh, software, anything that the business owns and it has a, a value to it uh, is considered an asset of that business. Okay. Usually they provide future services or benefits uh, and as you have as you can see you have a few examples here like cash supplies equipment etc all right so think of it as anything that the business owns that holds any value is considered an asset and you can
come up with your own examples when it comes to that. So as you can see, assets fall on its own on one side of the accounting equation. Now the other side of the equation has two components, liabilities and owner's equity. So first let's look into liabilities. Liabilities are basically claims against assets, debts, and obligations. So when a business uh, owns a lot of resources, let's say this business owns a lot of cars. They own 100 cars, for example. These cars or the money that was used to buy these cars must have came from somewhere, either from the owner of the business or from debt. Okay. So as you can see here, the claims against those assets can be classified into two groups. Either the money was used or came from creditors, okay, um, usually banks or financial uh, institutions or invest, uh, sorry, not investors, or from um, uh, the, uh, the uh, government, for example, as a bailout. So this is considered a liability. Uh, a money that the company needs to at some point in time needs to pay back for uh, whoever lent them that money okay uh, and on the other side we have owner's equity which is basically the money that is owed by the company to the owner of the business or the group of owners of the business so back to the company that owns 100 cars let's say they've uh, they've used uh, or their business is broken down into 30% debt and 70% equity that means 30 cars they have purchased using a borrowed money from a bank or whatever source and that 30% of uh, the cars uh, value needs to be paid, paid back in a certain uh, point of time to those lenders and the 70% equity or the 70% of the cars which is 70 cars in this case uh, are funded by the owner himself so let's say the owner have invested 70,000 and the banks or the, the business have borrowed 30,000 from uh, a bank for instance okay who is a creditor a creditor is the party to whom the money is owed uh, as we mentioned before like banks and so on and um, usually the accounts or the account types that fall under this group of accounts which is liabilities uh, are labeled with the word payable so normally when you see any account in the future that has the word payable in it payable to be paid which basically means to be paid usually falls under or always falls under the liabilities group of accounts okay so here we have accounts payable notes payable as an example Finally, here we have the final component of the basic accounting equation, which is the owner's equity. Owner's equity represents the ownership claim on total assets. So the claim on total assets by the owner of the business or the group of owners in case of a partnership or a corporation. Okay, but if let's assume we have a single owner of the business, that means this account represents the portion of the money available in the business or the value available in the business or the assets in the business that is originally owned by the owner and it needs to be paid back at certain point in time for that owner okay usually referred to as the residual equity and it's called residual equity just because the priority always goes to the creditors for paying back or for um, solvency uh, issues for example if the company needs to be shut down today and that company has 100,000 uh, reals in the bank the lenders or the liabilities needs to be closed first and then the rest of the amount goes to the owners okay so let's say that we have 30,000 liability on the uh, business or as uh, as debt on the business the assets when all the assets of the, the company are sold we need to first pay those creditors so we pay this three thirty thousand and then the residual or the remaining amount which is seventy thousand will go back to the owner okay will represent the owner's claim on the total assets 
this account as you're gonna see later when we talk about the extended accounting equation so here we're talking about the basic accounting equation when we go to the extended accounting uh, equation you're gonna see that the owner's equity is broken down to four main accounts okay those four main accounts are uh, investments uh, revenues expenses and drawings okay and basically investments and revenues increase owners equity so the more investment or owners capital put into the business by the owner the more the owner's equity is going to grow revenues also which is the money generated by the business activities the more revenues we have the more the owner is going to have a share of that business on the contrary drawings which is basically the money drawn by the owner uh, from the business decreases the owner equity and the expenses uh, of the business also decrease the owner's equity you can see we have a plus and minus sign here in front of each two to show you their effect on the owner's equity slice of the business uh, also worth noting that investment and drawings okay so the first one uh, on the plus side and the first one on the negative side these are usually um, are always caused by the owner himself so investment represents the money that the owner puts in the business so the more money he puts in the business the bigger his share of the business is going to be and on the opposite side drawings which is the money that the owner takes out of the business okay so these are we call them uh, or we could say that these are caused by the owner action uh, however the other two which are revenues and expenses are caused by the business regular day-to-day -day activities so revenues is basically the money uh, that is generated by the business activity and expenses is just the amount of money that the business needs to pay to keep the business running like um, like uh, rents or electricity bills and things like that uh, salaries and wages and so on okay I hope this part clear because this is very important for the future for your understanding so you need to understand what is assets what is liabilities and what is owners equity and what kinds of accounts fall under each group or each category now let's dig deeper into the equation itself as you can see here in this slide you can see that we have the basic accounting equation on top and then we have the extended version uh, lower in the in the third uh, line okay assets and liabilities stay the same however as you can see owners equity is broken down into its four main components and the sign in front of each of these components is represented by their effect on the owner's equity as we discussed before owner's capital for example has a plus sign owner's capital of course it's the same thing as investment we discussed in the previous slide owner's drawings has a negative side a negative sign because uh, the more the owner draws money from the business so takes out takes out money from the business the less his owner's equity going to become and then we have revenues and we said that revenues have a positive impact on owner's equity so that's why it has a plus sign in front of it on the other hand we have expenses with a negative sign because the more expenses the business incurs the the less the owner's share of the business going to be okay here we have the definitions of revenues and expenses on the following slide so revenues here result from business activities entered into uh, for the purpose of earning income just as i explained before common sources of revenue for a particular business are sales fees services commissions interest earned dividends royalties and so on all right on the other hand we have expenses which are the cost of assets consumed or services used in the process of earning revenue common expenses include salaries expense rent expense utilities expense tax expense and so on okay the similarities and differences similarities between assets and expenses they both consumes cash however the difference is uh, between assets and expenses which is a common mistake for students sometimes they confuse assets with expenses assets have future benefits revenue whereas expenses uh, um, are consumed and already used in the business uh, and paid for okay 
revenues minus expenses equals the net income or net profit this is helpful for you to understand when we come to talk about financial statements and financial reports you will notice that the net income statement of a specific company is mainly composed of their revenue minus expenses so the most simplified version of the net income statement is just to have revenues uh, on the top and then deduct all the expenses from that and you will get the net income or net profit of the business now how do we use the accounting equation well I already discussed that the accounting equation is very important but how do we use it this is what we're gonna look into next first of all we need to understand what is a transaction a transaction or a group of transactions are the businesses economic events recorded by accountants so any economic event that occurs in the business and gets recognized by an accountant and then recorded then we can call it a transaction okay it might be external or internal not all activities represent transactions each transaction has a dual effect on the accounting equation so remember our equation assets equals liabilities plus owners equity the first rule that you always need to keep in mind is that the equality always holds true the second rule that you need to keep in mind is that any transaction will always have two effects on the trans on the accounting equation okay so you cannot change one account without changing uh, another account at the same time okay it's a dual process so maybe uh, some transaction will increase assets so the left side of the equation is increased at the same time we need to have something increase on the other side okay either liabilities or owners equity or maybe we have an increase on the left side increase in the assets side of the equation and at the same time a decrease on that side as well so one type of assets is increased while another type of asset is decreased this is mainly seen when when the business purchases something uses using cash for example so uh, if the company has 100,000 cash and they spend 20,000 of that cash buying a car for example that means one type of asset which is the cash is going to decrease by 20,000 at the same time another type of asset which is cars or the cars account is going to increase by the same amount which is 20,000 and when in this case as you can see the equality will also hold true and the transaction had a dual effect so it affected two asset accounts one is cash and the other one is cars account here is another practice question for you the first one says the basic accounting equation states that assets equals liabilities of course this is wrong because the basic accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus owners equity the second one internal transactions do not affect the basic accounting equation because they are economic events that occur entirely within one company of course this is false last one if expenses are paid in cash then a assets will increase b liabilities will decrease c owners equity will increase d assets will decrease think about about it for a moment and of course the answer is d assets will decrease since we're going to be paying out cash here you have a couple of uh, practice questions they're pretty straightforward but I'm just gonna go over them real quickly with you to help you uh, have a better understanding so here the first question says determine the missing items or the missing amounts just by applying the basic accounting equation you can figure out the missing number right so for the first example we have uh, a 75,000 asset value equals 52,000 liabilities plus a missing amount for the owner's equity so what is that missing amount going to be of course it's going to be the difference between assets and liabilities remember we need to keep the equality in the equation true at all times uh, you can do 
uh, basic mathematical uh, manipulation to the equation to figure out the missing number. So it's okay to take liabilities to the other side of the equality uh, and the equation will change to become, of course, when you move it to the other side, you're going to have to reverse its sign. So the equation will become assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity. So in this case, we'll say 75,000 minus 52,000 equals a which is twenty three thousand dollars okay and the same applies for the rest of them it's always easier to have the assets amount missing like the second example in, in uh, b uh, because you don't need to shift any accounts around you just need to add liabilities and owners equity quickly on your calculator and you'll figure out the amount in this case it's sixty two thousand so twenty eight thousand plus 34,000 equals 62,000, which is the missing amount B. Last one, 84,000 assets equals C. Here we have a missing amount in the liabilities plus 55,000 owner's equity. Again, you can shift owner's equity to the other side with a negative sign. So we'll, the equation will become 84,000 minus 55,000 equals the liabilities or the missing amount in liabilities which is 29,000 all right the second exercise says classify each of these items as an asset so you need to put a for asset account or liability so you put l as a liability account or owner's equity you need to put oe which stands for owner's equity so for the first one accounts receivable what kind of an account it is uh, if you go ahead with this exercise, you uh, should understand that accounts receivable is an asset. So you need to put A in front of it. And usually any account that has the words receivable in it is an asset. Second one, accounts payable. Uh, I always tell my students uh, <laughs> the payable family. So any account that has the word payable in front of it, you need to automatically know that this account is a liability because from the wording of it it says payable that means to pay that amount so you need to pay that amount in a specific uh, or a certain point in time so the second one is l liability third one owner's capital as we discussed before owner's capital is one part of the owner's equity components so it is oe number four office supplies supplies are an asset or a type of asset so a Number five, utilities expense. And this is uh, expense. Any expense always goes under the expense part of the owner's equity. So this is OE. And then cash. Of course, cash is the king of assets. So it always uh, it is always classified as an asset. Uh, number seven, notes payable. Again, this is the... Uh, younger brother for the payable family so it needs to go to uh, liabilities finally equipment equipment is also an asset account so you need to put a uh, in number eight so how do we apply the accounting equation for certain economic events first of all we need to go through the first activity or the first step which is identifying before we can actually record right so any economic event that you come across as an accountant you first need to filter it and see uh, based on the following criteria so is that economic event or is that event uh, not necessarily economic has a direct effect on the financial position of the company if yes then you take it through to the next step which is recording how do you record it you record based on the accounting equation we're gonna see later how we do that if it doesn't affect the financial position of the company then you need to uh, your the answer to your criterion is gonna be no and you're not gonna take it through to the next activity or the next step of the process which is recording so here we have examples like supplies are purchased on accounts and when we say on account that means we're gonna pay for them later okay uh, do they affect the financial position of the company? Yes. Uh, 
maybe they do not affect it right away uh, but they in reality they do because one of the main problems that students have uh, when when they're dealing with accounting is that they're always looking into uh, money terms or cash terms uh, that's not necessarily the case an accountant in accounting we measure everything in money terms that's true but we don't only look at cash so even though we bought the supplies and we're only going to pay for them later that means we did not actually exchange cash we did not pay however our supplies account have grown so if we had before 20,000 uh, real worth of supplies and now we got 10,000 more so that means our supplies account is going to grow from 20,000 uh, real value to 30,000 real value okay as you see we measured this in cash however we did not actually pay for them but it did have a direct effect on the financial position of the company because when you look at the accounting equation uh, of this uh, particular company after this transaction you're going to see that the assets are going to increase because now we have more supplies so we're going to have a bigger assets account caused by the increase in supplies and on the other side we're going to have more liabilities because that's 10,000 we're going to need to pay at, at the future for the person we bought the supplies from so the left side of the equation is going to increase the assets and the liabilities on the right side of the equation also going to increase okay so there is a clear financial position effect of that transaction the second one is an employee is hired this is not recorded because this does not have a financial effect or economic effect on the organization the last one owner withdraws cash for personal use remember we've seen that we've seen that drawings is actually one component of the owner's equity the more the owner draws money from the business the less his owner equity is going to become so this does have a direct effect on the financial position of the company so it's definitely recorded here is another practice uh, problem I'm not gonna solve this one I'm just gonna give you a quick trick to help you solve this on your own so when you look at a question like this you might get uh, a little bit scared from the long text and the numbers and things like that but don't worry about it the only thing on the only trick that you're gonna need to use in order to make this easier is to write down the accounting equation in front of you okay and then assume that the accounting equation is zeroed so that means assets equals zero liabilities equals zero and owners equity equals zero and then apply the changes that are in the question to your first line to your equation and do your calculation based on that so in this case if total liabilities decreased by 15,000 so you're gonna go down under liabilities uh, uh, under your equation under the liabilities group and put for example minus 15,000 and then the owner's equity decreased by 10,000 so you put minus 10,000 under owner's equity you're gonna see that there is a total decrease of 15,000 and 10,000 that's 25,000 uh, dollar decrease on the right hand side so that means that your left hand side which is the assets must have also decreased by 25,000 correct because we said that the equality always holds true and you can see that a would be the correct answer on this slide and then and on the following slide you'll see that you have a couple of practice problems as well so uh, feel free to go through them on your own uh, they're pretty straightforward uh, just like we've done in the previous practice question so just do these couple on your own for your own practice now this is a very good example to shape up your understanding of the process of transaction analysis you can find this uh, example in your textbook however I'm gonna go through it uh, here because this is gonna really help you a lot uh, in the future of this course so pay close attention to this example try to uh, clear your mind and uh, apply um, and go uh, follow through uh, with me so the first 
uh, this uh, this uh, exercise has like 10 transactions we're gonna go through them one by one and we're gonna solve them uh, on the uh, table that you have in front of you this table is called tabular analysis and it's nothing uh, fancy nothing complicated uh, it might scare you a little bit at first glance but if you pay close attention you will see that it's basically just the accounting equation uh, you can see it on the top assets equals liabilities plus owners equity however it's broken down to sub accounts okay so on the left side we have assets accounts and then they're broken down into different assets accounts so we have cash accounts receivable supplies and equipment on the other side we have liabilities here in this example we only have one kind of liability which is accounts payable okay so we put that under liabilities and owners equity uh, as you can see it's broken down to the expand expanded uh, format which is owners capital minus owners drawings plus revenue minus expenses so let's go through the transactions one by one and see uh, the effect of each transaction on the accounting equation and solve it in the tabular analysis now bear in mind the tabular analysis is nothing uh, following uh, uh, any gap principles or anything uh, so if you continue your studies as a, a, a student majors in accounting you almost never gonna use this uh, in the future uh, it's not standardized but it's really a good tool for you to understand what's happening uh, when you're recording your transactions okay so let's get on with it transaction one Ray Neal decides to open a computer programming service which he names Softbyte so this is the name of our company Softbyte on September 1st 2012 Ray Neal invests 15,000 cash in the business okay so the owner of the business who is Ray Neal took $15,000 from his own personal money and put it in the business so in case we have a, um, a, 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 a accounting manager or a financial finances manager of this uh, a new project uh, the, basically the money is going to go from Ray Neal's hands who is the owner into the bank account uh, dedicated for the business or into the treasury of the business okay so what's the effect of this transaction it's basically uh, gonna do two things for us as we learned that each transaction has dual effects the first easy to see effect which is cash right because the cash of the business is going to increase by 15,000 before this transaction the business had no money because it's a new project so the assets side of the business is going to be zero the cash in particular is going to be zero but now we're going to need to add 15,000 to that account okay to show that the business now owns fifteen thousand dollars in cash okay so the left side is going to have plus fifteen thousand under cash now the other effect is going to be of course what it's going to be owner's capital because the owner uh, owner's share of the business is going to grow by fifteen thousand okay so now we have plus fifteen thousand under cash on the left side of the the equation and plus fifteen thousand under owner's capital on the right side of the equation Now the second transaction uh, as follows purchase of equipment for cash softbyte purchases computer equipment for 7000 cash so what the, the the new project have done is that they took that 15000 cash they received from the owner and the first thing they've done is that they bought equipment or bought uh, computer equipment for their business the price they paid for that computer equipment is seven thousand so what's going to happen to the accounting equation or to the different accounts of the business first thing that's going to happen is that our cash is going to drop by seven thousand or going to be reduced by seven thousand since we've spent that money right so cash is going to have a minus seven thousand underneath it and the other account that is going to be affected take a quick look take a guess that is correct equipment is going to increase by 7,000 so notice in this specific transaction only the left side of the equation has been affected so there's no change in liabilities there's no change in owners equity the only change that happened to the 
accounting equation is on the left side which is the asset side so one type of asset was decreased which is cash and one type of asset was increased which is equipment okay so minus 7,000 under cash plus 7,000 under equipment now in this transaction we have a small twist so pay close attention the transaction says Softbyte purchases uh, for 1,600 from Acme Supply Company computer paper and other supplies expected to last several months. Notice the last sentence here. It says the purchase is made on account. Okay, that means we did not, as a soft bite company, did not pay the money right away. They're gonna need to pay it on a later date. So we cannot say that the cash was reduced here because we did not actually pay in cash. So the first thing that is going to happen on the asset side is that we're going to have an increase in our supplies by the same amount, which is 1,600. So we're going to say plus 1,600 under supplies. However, this time we're not going to reduce cash. What's going to happen is that we're going to have an increase in our financial obligations to pay that cash in a later date. So we're going to move all the way across the equality in the equation. We're going to go under liabilities and you'll see accounts they are called accounts payable this account is gonna grow gonna increase by 1600 since our obligations or financial obligations are gonna increase by this particular amount so in this example we're gonna have plus 1600 under supplies and we're gonna have plus 1600 under accounts payable which is under liabilities so notice this time we had an increase on, le on the left side and we had an equal increase on the right side of the equation. So the equation will still be uh, true or equal. Now here we have something a little bit different. This time we are receiving money, okay? So the transaction says Softbyte receives 1,200 cash from customers for programming services it has provided, okay? So now our customers have came and paid us 1,200. For what? For a service that we have provided for them. So the accounts that are going to be affected in this case, first we have cash, which is going to increase by 1,200, and revenue, okay? Because this is money received from our business activity. We have received we have delivered the service and we received this money in exchange so this is part of the normal business activity that is generating money for us so this will go under revenue all the way across the equation under owner's equity so in this case we're gonna have plus 1200 under cash and plus 1200 under revenue it's also worth noting that from the previous transaction transaction 4 what happened as a result if you look closely to the right side uh, you see an increase in under revenue but what does that increase actually represent it pours into the owner's equity so since the business have generated revenue okay income the owner's slice of the business or the owner's share of the business now as a result increased by that same amount okay so instead of him owning 15,000 of the business now he basically you could say that he made a profit of 1,200 okay we cannot say profit yet because we need to take into account expenses as well and deduct them but as a general understanding uh, instead of him owning 15,000 dollars of the business now he owns 16,200 so his share of the business has grown all right so pay attention to that now transaction 5 says softbite receives a bill for $250 from the daily news for advertising but postpones payment until uh, until a later date okay so basically what happened here is that we have requested advertising service okay from another company which is the daily news but we're not gonna pay them now we're gonna pay them later okay so this is 
mainly also going to affect our obligations, our financial obligations. All right. So what are the two sides that are going to be affected by such transaction? First, as I said, we're going to have more financial obligations. So basically, our accounts payable also going to grow this time by 250. The other thing that is going or the other account that is going to be affected is expenses. OK, so this is a regular expense of a business, which is advertising expense, which should go under expenses that you see all the way at the end to the right hand side under owner's equity. So here we're going to have plus 250 under expenses. That plus is an increase. However, the minus sign is going to drop from the expenses itself because remember we discussed that expenses have a negative effect on the owner's equity. So this minus is also going to drop uh, in front of the amount. Okay, so we're going to write minus 250. Uh, for the uh, expenses side and we're gonna have a plus accounts payable of 250 which represents that we can have more financial obligations for the future that we need to pay okay so plus 250 under accounts payable minus 250 under expenses please keep in mind this is really important that the minus is just dropping down from the top because we actually did not reduce our expenses our expenses have grown but since our expenses have a negative effect on our equity we always have a minus sign in front of it now in this transaction number six softbuy uh, provides three thousand five hundred dollars of programming services for customers the company receives cash of one thousand five hundred from customers and it builds the balance of 2000 on account okay now notice here we have something a little bit different we have a transaction that has not just a dual effect but actually have it has a triple effect okay so it has an effect on three different accounts all right so it's a kind of a complex transaction if you want to call it the first thing let's take it bit by bit Softpy provides 3,500 of programming services for customers, so that directly takes you to the revenue column, okay? Because th this money was generated as a revenue from our business activity, so we're gonna say plus 3,500 under revenue, okay? So that's the first part. The company receives cash of 1,500 from customers, so that is clearly. An increase in our cash the company's cash is going to increase by 1500 so that basically says um, plus 1500 under cash now if you notice we have a difference between those two entries now we have plus 3500 on the right hand side of the equation and we have plus 1500 on the left side of the equation where is the difference the difference uh, if you continue reading through you will see that there is 2000 that is going to be on account okay it is on account this time however unlike the first um, uh, unlike transaction number um, three this time uh, this money is going to be paid for us it's not going to be paid by us to someone else this money is going to be paid by the customer to us okay so this time it's not an account payable this time it's an account receivable that's that means this amount is going to be received in the future uh, in later lessons you will uh, understand more the the, the deal with the uh, accounts payable and accounts receivable what do we call them what do we consider them and why do we use them okay but for now just for the sake of transaction analysis let's just go with that you will understand further later down the line so that means we have plus 1,500 under cash, plus 2,000 under accounts receivable, plus 3,500 under revenue, which will continue to have the equality of our accounting equation. So we're going to have a total of 3,500 increase on both sides of the equation.
Here we have another compound uh, entry or complex transaction. Uh, you're going to see that it has multiple accounts, not just three this time, even more than three. So Soft White pays the following expenses in cash for September. Notice the word expenses. This is your keyword here to analyze. Store rent, which was $600 salaries of employees which was 900 and utilities which was 200 so now for the first part we know that this represents a an increase in our expenses okay so it's going to affect the expense column under owner's equity and it's going to also affect what our cash because it says pays the following expenses in cash so we're paying right away that means we're going to have minus 600 under cash okay for the rent and it's going to be directly in line with minus 600 under expenses remember this is an increase in expenses but the minus drops from the top the sign because it represents the effect of the increase in expenses on owner's equity right so minus 600 under cash um, directly in front of minus 600 under expenses again uh, minus 900 under cash for the second part which is salaries of employees and minus 900 under expenses uh, here we we're grouping all of these under expenses but later on down the line when you uh, when you do your actual recording you're going to need to specify which type of expense that was okay so we're going to have different accounts for each one of these and finally 200 or minus 200 under cash uh, which directly relates to minus 200 uh, um, under expenses for utilities utilities basically means uh, like electricity uh, electricity bills and things like that or water bills Now, transaction eight is interesting because it takes us back or it relates to a previous transaction, as you can see. Softbite pays its $250 daily news bill in cash. So remember in transaction five, we said that we uh, um, made an agreement with Dell News to for some advertising, but we are going to pay them in the future, right? Because of that, we had an increase in accounts payable but now we need to close that transaction and pay it in full so what's going to happen is first our liabilities are going to decrease because when we pay we no longer owe daily news that amount so we need to minimize it okay so we're gonna say minus 250 under accounts payable on the other hand our cash is also going to reduce because we're paying in cash so minus 250 under cash okay this also applies if we are going to pay partially for example if we for example we're only going to pay 200 then instead of writing minus 250 under accounts payable and minus 250 under cash you're just going to write minus 200 here uh, and under accounts payable and minus 200 in under uh, cash and this re will result in you still having a financial obligation of only 50 and the 200 will go away okay but this is just an example for us here under this transaction this specific example we are paying in full so we're going to reduce that whole amount that 250 from both sides from both cash and from accounts payable now uh, this is um, also in relation to a previous transaction okay but it represents the other side of the coin where we have some customers who owe us money and they are now coming to pay us okay so the transaction says softbite receives six hundred dollars in cash from customers who had been billed for services in transaction six if you go back to transaction six if you remember uh, we uh, delivered services worth three thousand five hundred we received cash one thousand five hundred and we still had a an account receivable balance of 2000 that the customers need to pay us in the future here they are not going to pay in full they're only going to pay 600 so they're still going to pay us 1400 okay 
but for that 600 we're gonna have to reduce uh, deduct from our accounts receivable so we're gonna say minus 600 under accounts receivable and plus 600 under cash because remember the customer is paying us so our cash is gonna increase we're gonna have more money all right and notice the change is gonna have a, a negative and a positive effect on the asset side only of the equation so minus accounts receivable plus cash for the same amount of 600 All right, so here we have the last transaction, transaction number 10. Ray Neal, if you remember him, that gentleman who's actually the owner of the Softbite business, withdraws $1,300 in cash from the business for his personal use. Here, <clears throat> when you see personal use, this is your keyword to understand that you're dealing with a drawings account, okay? So your keywords are withdraws and uh, the second keyword is personal use so you directly need to recognize that this is a an owner or this transaction is gonna affect owners drawings account all right owners drawings account is exactly or similar to expenses where whenever it grows it actually has a negative effect on owners equity so we don't say here that the owners drawings account was reduced no it was actually increased but we dropped the minus sign from the top, from the equation itself, to show how is owner's drawings going to affect owner's equity. So here we're gonna have minus 1,300 under owner's drawings on the right-hand side, and at the same time, minus 1,300 in cash, under cash, okay? So we're gonna have a minus on the left side of the equation, uh, minus 1300 and minus 1300 on the right side of the equation so our equality will still hold true now the last thing we are gonna have to do with this uh, tabular analysis is add up all columns together okay and then double check your equation again just like it's listed on the top just to make sure that you did not enter any amount wrong and you still have your equation uh, holding true for all the amounts okay so each column on its own you add it together from the top to the bottom you list or the, you enter the amount at the bottom of the column and then when you finish you go horizontally uh, and add up um, all the equation together so you add up all assets together and then on the other side you have your liabilities plus your owner's equity components and each component with its own corresponding sign so liabilities plus owner's capital minus owner's drawings plus revenue minus expenses and when you add up all that you need to come up to one amount on the left for all the assets and one amount uh, on the right for liabilities and one amount for the total owner's equity and make sure that uh, the two amounts on the right will equal the assets amount okay this is how you check your work now remember how we mentioned uh, in our um, introduction that we're gonna cover the four main financial statements that are used in accounting Okay, and I also mentioned to you that there are more statements, but these are basically the most important four. So companies usually prepare these four financial statements uh, when they uh, want to communicate their financial information to uh, especially external users. All right, and then external users use those financial statements, particularly those four, to analyze the performance of the business to generate a better understanding of the business how the business is doing is it growing is it not is it making profits is it not how much debt they have uh, how much owners capital they have and all of this information how much cash they're holding how how are they handling their cash and how is it circulating to help with business activities and so on and all of this will be analyzed by financial analysts to basically create a better un uh, idea or better understanding of the business okay so here uh, these four financial statements are the income statements 
the owner's equity statement, the balance, uh, balance sheet, or uh, in other terminology, uh, the uh, financial position of the company, okay? And finally, the statement of cash flows, all right? So these are basically the four main uh, financial statements that are generated by the company accountants of the, and that are used by analysts to look into the business. Let's take a quick look and see what these four financial statements contain and how are they generated, okay? Let's go. As you can see here, we are using uh, the company that we just worked with, which is Softbyte, to uh, create an idea of the four financial statements. So first, we're starting with the income statement at the top, Softbyte income statement for the month ended September 30, 2012. Uh, you're gonna make it a habit in this course, in accounting in general, that you always start with these three lines in whatever uh, work that you're doing. So if you are recording transactions later on when we do general journals or ledgers and things like that or in your financial statements. The name of the company, the name of the record or the report and the period which this record or report is covering. Okay, so these three lines are very very important. Notice the income statement is uh, consistent of two main components, just like I mentioned to you earlier. So it's basically the revenues of the business minus the expenses of the business, okay? So in this case, the, this company has only one source of revenue, which is the service revenue, 4,700. So we have revenue as a main uh, account or main line, and then we have service revenue as a sub account. Uh, and this is the only source of income or source of revenue, so it's only one line or one part of the revenues, okay? However, on the expenses side, which we need to deduct from the revenues, we have multiple uh, types or sub-accounts of expenses, so we have multiple lines. Here we have salaries and wages expense, rent expense, advertising expense, utilities expense, okay? And then we have their total added up, we take this amount, which is 1950 from the revenues, which give us the net, uh, net income number, okay? The net income number is very important because this net income represents the activity of the business or what was generated by the activity of the business. So from all the business's income or revenues and all its expenses, what was the total? What did we come up with? Did we come up with a positive number or a negative number? Positive number, that means we are generating income, which leads us to generate profits, right? Which basically means we are generating profits. If it was a negative number, that means our expenses far exceed our revenues. That, mean, that means we're actually paying more than what we are receiving. That means we don't have a net income, we have a net loss. Okay, so if this total is negative, then you, instead of writing net income, you're going to need to write net loss. This number is then going to be moved on to the next financial statement, which is the owner's equity statement. Okay, remember the owner's equity statement, we said that it is comprised of four components. Owner's capital, or his investments in the business, minus the drawings that he made or the owner made uh, from the business, the money he took out of the business, and whatever is the result of revenues and expenses. So in the report, we don't have to split them here in the owner's equity as revenues and expenses because we already have done that in the income statement. So we just take the net income amount, okay? So you see here in the statement, we have owner's capital at the beginning of the period which was zero, because remember Softbyte was a new business, we just started. And then we add the investments that were made by the owner, Ray Neal, remember him? He invested 15,000 in the business. So here you can see it, 15,000 was added as an investment to the business. And we also add the net income, which was generated 
during that financial period by the business activity okay which is the 2750 we got from the previous statement okay that will give us 17750 now we also need to deduct whatever money that the owner have withdrawn from the business as you can see here we have list drawings remember from our uh, transaction analysis that the owner at the last transaction transaction number 10 he withdrew 1300 from the business in cash so here we deduct that amount 1300 from our total and we get the owner's capital at the end of the period okay notice at the top you have owner's capital September 1st which is the first day of the month and then at the end we have owner's capital September 30th which is the last day of the month of September our total is here 16,450 okay which represents the owner's share of the business how much he owns that means if he decided on 30th of September to just close the business altogether and take all his money out he can have 16,450 which in other words also means that this is the total amount of profit that uh, Ray Neal has made from the business during this month if you take that uh, 16,450 deduct the 15,000 that he initially invested in the business that means he made a profit a total profit of uh, 1,600 and uh, <clears throat> sorry 1,450 of course uh, added to the 1,300 that he withdrew on, uh, originally uh, which actually gonna come up to the net income which is 2750 so during the month of September he made profits of 2750 dollars okay which is the exact figure we came up with in the income statement now notice here we have our owner's equity statement again okay we have the opening balance for the owner's capital which was zero at the top on the 1st of September and we have the closing balance on the end of the month which is 30th of September the last line of the first statement owners capital September 30th 16,450 now we're gonna use that number the closing balance for owners capital in our next statement which is the balance sheet okay notice how it goes all the way from the owners equity statement to the owners capital figure in the balance sheet the balance sheet is basically just the accounting equation however represented in a table format okay so if you notice we have just exactly as we have in the accounting equation assets at the top and then liabilities and owners equity on the other side okay some um, some people prefer to create the balance sheet uh, on left and right side so they have their left side where it has assets and the right side has liabilities and owners equity however the format that you see in front of you right here on top of each other is the standardized format it's assets on the top they include all the assets all the different assets that softbyte owns on that specific day which is september 30th they have cash 8050 we're gonna see next how we figured out that amount accounts receivable 1400 supplies 1600 equipment 7000 which gives us our total assets of eighteen thousand and fifty dollars and then we have liabilities and owners equity together first liabilities we only have one liability account which is accounts payable of one thousand six hundred and we have owners equity which is basically composed of the owner's capital at the end of the financial period which we got from the previous statement okay so 16,450 notice how both liabilities and owners equity come up to eighteen thousand and fifty dollars as well which is exactly equal to the total of the assets and this is what you need because if in case there is a difference in those two amounts that means you have made a mistake Now, finally, for the last uh, statement that we're going to look into, which is a statement of cash flows, you will see that it is broken down into 
uh, various sections. For the first section is the cash flows from operating activities. Okay, so basically from revenues and expenses. So we need to add revenues and subtract expenses. This is gonna give us the cash amount that was actually exchanged. So notice here we're only writing the amounts that are in cash. So the revenues we generated that we or for the services that we provided that we actually received the cash for and for the expenses that we actually paid for okay this is going to give us a net cash uh, provided by operating activities of 1350 okay then we have cash flows from investing activities and in our example we only have one investment made which was the purchase of the equipment which cost us 7000 so we subtracting 7000 notice how the brackets are there in the financial statements you never put minus sign when you want to represent an amount that is negative okay or an outflow of cash you're gonna use brackets so 7000 in brackets basically means minus 7000 all right then the next section we have cash flows from financing activities financing activities basically are the amounts that were uh, caused directly by the investor which is in this case is the owner Ray Neal he invested 15,000 so we have that in positive uh, there is a typo here where they have one bracket to the right ignore that this is a mistake it's actually just 15,000 no brackets and then we have the drawings basically the the amount of money that the owner had taken out in cash which was 1,300 so 15,000 minus 1,300 gives us 13,700 okay that is the net increase in cash in case the total was negative so the owner have actually taken out more money than he invested in this particular financial period then we're gonna have a net decrease in cash and we're gonna put the number in brackets okay and then we add that to the cash at the beginning of the period which was actually zero remember because it's a new business we did not have any cash at the beginning of the period and we total all that up and we're gonna get the cash at the end of the period which is the eight thousand and fifty dollars that we've seen before in the balance sheet so when you create your balance sheet you're gonna create it last or you create it and leave the cash amount empty and you do all the other statements first and then add those amounts back right because you'll get the cash amount from the statement of cash flows you will get the owner's capital from the owner's equity statement and you cannot create the owner's equity statement without first creating the income statement so you can see how much net income or net loss you have generated throughout that financial period all right another thing that is also worth noticing that all the th uh, the statements except from the balance sheet so the income statement and the equity statement and the statement of cash flows these cover a specific um, financial period so uh, a month for example or a year okay so it covers all that period however when you look at the balance sheet you'll see that is it's a specific date only one day so at the moment this is the financial position of the company okay so if you look at the top three lines on each uh, statement you will notice that for all the other th three statements it covers a complete month so it says for the month ended such and such but for the balance sheet it says it gives you a specific date because uh, right now this is the financial position of the company 10 minutes later maybe it will change okay so balance sheet is basically just like a selfie like a picture you're taking for the business in a specific time and date all right it does not cover a complete financial period uh, it is worth mentioning uh, and you should pay attention to that now we're just gonna take a, another quick look at these statements after we've seen them uh, and what they represent so the statement of cash flows basically it provides information for a specific period of time and it answers the following questions where did the cash come from what was the cash used for 
and what was the change in the cash balance throughout the financial period okay here we come to the end of chapter one thank you all for listening uh, I realize this chapter is a little bit heavy um, but uh, I tried my best to explain it uh, using uh, my voiceover the uh, uh, slides to try and make things easier for you this is a completely new experience for me and probably new for you so hopefully you find this uh, very helpful uh, in your study okay I'll try to do this for all the chapters and upload them to Blackboard um, for you to have an easier time studying and at the time of the classes uh, we will uh, just do activities together uh, and take your questions and things like that and you should be you should have studied uh, beforehand before the class time okay hopefully this way is gonna make th things easier for you and you're gonna have a reference to go back to all the time to understand specific things so you can go to the slide and just click the audio and listen to my explanation again uh, I hope that uh, you find this uh, very helpful okay uh, thank you all for listening and I wish you the best of luck